What's going on, YouTube fam? This is the Wealth Investing Network. We do this for the win. My name is Jamal, if you didn't know. We're gonna talk about SoFi today and compare them to Upstart in terms of the company, in terms of the stock, and we'll see what's going on because there's a lot of moving pieces here. But before we get into it, I have to ask you to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Does YouTube kind of make me ask you to do this? Yes, but it does help the channel grow and it helps me create better content for you. And that's what I call a win-win. We like that here at the Wealth Investing Network. So we're gonna start with SoFi here, and I think the big question is, do they match up to their slogan of get your money right? It seems like SoFi wants to be a super app that can offer you all kinds of things financially to where potentially you don't have to go anywhere else. Perhaps one day this might be the only FinTech app on your phone. That seems to be the big picture here, at least looking into the future. They have SoFi Relay, SoFi Money, SoFi Invest, all different types of loan products. So you can buy stocks, trade crypto, automate investing. You could also treat it like a bank account, even though SoFi is not a bank at this point, they partner with banks, more on that later. And then of course, you can manage your credit score, similar to like a Credit Karma. And of course, their bread and butter, they actually started with lending, with student loans, and they've branched out from there. So they're trying to compete with the squares and the PayPal's of the world, and even a little bit with Intuit, because they actually own Credit Karma. Not to get too much on a tangent, but I've seen SoFi ads on Credit Karma's app. I mainly just use it for the credit score, but advertising with Credit Karma can get companies like SoFi and Upstart in front of a lot of eyes, and we'll talk about that a little more later. Another big thing to talk about with SoFi is that in 2020, they just acquired Galileo. That's a payment software company that connects banks to credit card processors. In a nutshell, this is important infrastructure for actually some of their competitors like Robinhood, Chime, and others that I haven't heard of like Monzo, Varo, and TransferWire. But Galileo is a big player in the fintech space. They are growing rapidly. I mean, we're talking about 70 million accounts here and the business is just doubling and doubling. Well, SoFi bought it and now they contribute roughly 20% of SoFi's total revenue. Speaking of total revenue, SoFi actually reported earnings recently and that had big implications for the stock. The positives is that they're more than doubling year over year in terms of member growth. They offer way more products, another huge signifier of their growth, and their quarterly net revenue is up 101%. But when they reported earnings in mid-August, I had investors asking me why they took such a dip from over $17 down to this $13 range. And they've clawed back some gains since then, got knocked down again. I heard this is a popular one with the Wall Street Bets crowd. Shout outs to them, but it makes sense because 101% revenue growth gives you a lot to like. But I think what investors didn't like was that they had positive net income in 2020 and they went to a net loss of $165 million. That's a lot. Because in a nutshell, I mean, after all the net revenue that they bring in and they pay their workers, they pay all their expenses, their debt, their taxes, they lost a ton of money at the end of the day. And so while some investors were clearly scared off by this drop in the share price, there are also reasons to be bullish. There's kind of both sides to this. Now, I'm not in this stock. I'm also not a financial advisor, not trying to give you financial advice. You've got to create your own framework, do your own research. But I'm going to try and give you the bull and bear case. I'm a numbers guy, so let's dig into the balance sheet. You can see that in December of 2020, they had a ton of debt, and it appears that they've paid a lot of it off. And so that's one of the reasons why you come public, why you come to the stock market, because when you have investor capital behind you, you basically get a bag of money. They went from almost $5 billion in debt to now only having about $2.3 billion in debt. But let me not say only. $2.3 billion is a lot especially considering their cash position, it seems they have more than four times their amount of debt than they have cash. And when you stack that on top of their net loss that they have, I can start to see why their stock price got knocked down. But like I said, I'm trying to give you different sides of things. A key thing to note is that when they became a public company, they got a big bag of cash, they used it to pay off a lot of debt. And on top of that, they had non-cash stock-based compensation expenses, and they had fair value exchanges warrants. They're claiming those were the largest contributors to the current period net loss. That only affects the short term, but things like their growth in lending and their acquisition of Galileo, these are long-term factors, right? These are parts of their business that are already profitable. And so with that said, I can't forget about a big potential catalyst that they have coming up, which is a potential bank charter. That could improve their profitability. See, banking employs roughly the same business model but the key is lowering the cost to acquire customers. They'll also be able to hold more loans. They'll be able to determine their own interest rates and things of that nature. And I think that would really help them become the super app that they've been trying to be. Okay, moving on, Upstart. At this point in their business, we're not talking about a super app, but we are talking about loans, all different types of loans at great rates. And if you thought SoFi's customer growth was impressive, no, 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 Upstart is the one. With their recent earnings, Upstart shattered the market's expectation. 
They posted a revenue of almost $200 million in the quarter. That's more than 10 times what it produced in the pandemic-stricken second quarter of 2020. That was the worst quarter for a lot of people. And so a lot of businesses are just now like recovering. No, this business is thriving a year later. So basically, analysts had this one way wrong. And management was also conservative because they had to increase their guidance. Now they're expecting third quarter revenue of over 200 million, 215 on the high end, while analysts had only been expecting 162 million. And look, I'm not just gonna read the numbers. Here it is in chart form. And what I think is really important is earnings. This business is officially more mature than SoFi because not only are they increasing their revenue at a breakneck pace, they are bringing in earnings. They're profitable. And this is rare for a young technology company. Similar to SoFi, they're not a bank. They partner with banks. And I think it's key that most of their loans submitted via their digital platform were fully automated and approved instantly. Having everything online is a boon for this business. And they have good partnerships. They have good acquisitions. They acquired Prodigy, which added auto loans to the company's growing portfolio of lending products. And we're talking big names here, Ford, Honda, Toyota. And this completely expands the TAM or the total addressable market. And here's another thing that was a big boon to their business, Credit Karma. Apparently traffic from Credit Karma service procured 53% of the loans Upstart was able to direct to its banking partners. Upstart is up over 1500% at the time of this recording. You've got to love this stock chart. Their IPO last year, when they got introduced onto the stock market, the pricing was around $20. Can you believe if you got in at this point? And I've been watching this for a while. I thought, uh, maybe they'll slow down at $200. And they slowed down, but then they went straight to $300. They could be on their way to four. And so one thing that investors might be worried about is that Upstart is overvalued. And that's definitely a risk, but I wouldn't necessarily look at it this way. I think it's time for us to compare these two companies like we often do on this channel. I'm going to put them head to head based on publicly available information. Let's go. We've got their stock prices, but more importantly, we've got their market caps. The market capitalization is what really determines how big the company is or how much the market is valuing the company at. And you might not have guessed this from their market cap, but SoFi is actually bringing in more revenue than Upstart at almost $800 million in the past 12 months compared to Upstart's about half a billion, let's call it. But when you look at the revenue growth, Upstart is killing the game. And that's why they have a much higher price to sales ratio. This is a key metric to me for companies that are either newly profitable or not profitable yet because it's the market cap divided by the total revenue. So this is the multiple that you're paying for the stock. If this number was one, you wouldn't be paying a multiple at all. But the higher this multiple is, either the more excited about the company people are or the faster it's growing. And in Upstart's case, this represents how fast it's growing. But over time, this number should come down. And there's some people that find that these are just way too overvalued. I'd say they're just about fine, especially considering their growth. But in my honest opinion, Upstart actually looks particularly attractive because they have half a billion dollars of cash in their balance sheet and basically no debt in comparison. But unfortunately, I think I'm one of those people that just can't bring myself to enter the stock at this point in terms of their valuation. I might regret it because I kind of regret it not entering at 200, but that's just the game. That's how it goes. I think SoFi is a fascinating company. I think they're set up for growth, but that comes with the huge amount of debt they already have. And to continue growing, you need to have cash on hand because growth is expensive. If they keep bringing in losses like this, they're either gonna run out of money, have to take on more debt, or dilute shareholders, all of which would knock their stock price down even further. We're out of time, but like, subscribe, and comment if you want me to go over the charts. I think there's some interesting stuff. I've gotta go count money. See you in the next video.